Hey guys, what's up? This is Bucket Ponds, and my name is Terry. This is going to be a long video, so if you're into that, you know, sit down, grab a snack, and stay tuned. Uh, today we are looking at the 2-liter soda bottle aquarium that I set up back in February of this year. That was about seven months ago, and the tank has developed uh, really well. I wanted to show you that, you know, when I build a tank, I don't just throw it away the next day. We don't build fake aquariums like them people on Pinterest and TikTok. Uh, no, when I build a tank, even out of a 2-liter soda bottle, uh, it's meant to last for a long time. So, uh, as you see here, we have our large pond snail there behind those plants. We have our bladder snails cruising around doing their stuff. We have a ton of tiny aquarium creatures in here, including my beloved uh, detritus worms, ostracods, paramecia, all kinds of stuff. There's probably even some tubaflex in here, but I haven't seen them as of yet. This is a planted 2-liter soda bottle with uh, dayflower, bladderwort, uh, Nutella macroalgae, a little bit of duckweed, and some other plants and algae that I happen to have on hand. And I'm very happy with this tank. Now, uh, if you want to set up a tank like this, there is a setup video. The first episode when I made this aquarium seven months ago. And I'll gladly put a link to that in the description. But for today, we're diving into this small tank. We're looking at what's going on here. We're checking out all of our plants and creatures. And uh, yeah, my detritus worms, uh, I'm very happy to see them in here. I've lost them in some of my other cultures. I do have cultures that crash occasionally. It does happen. Zooming out a little bit, you can get an idea of what this tank looks like. Uh, we do have some wilted dayflower leaves up there, and that's okay. Uh, the dayflower plant, this is Camelina diffusa, climbing dayflower. This is not Asiatic dayflower, of which you might be familiar. Uh, but with these leaves, I'm just going to chuck them right back into the tank and trim it up a little bit as we talk here. Uh, this will eventually become worm food and snail food. Uh, as far as the leaves wilting, uh, the dayflower seems to be somewhat vulnerable and somewhat fragile. I may not be keeping it warm enough, or uh, I may not be giving it the right nutrients that it requires. Or it could be that the uh, the wilting is just some kind of a strategy that it utilizes during uh, growth periods. I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to throw those leaves back in here for the snails and worms to eat. No problem there. I haven't done any maintenance on this aquarium. I just feed them occasionally with a slice of cucumber once or twice a week. And I top up the water as needed. Now we have, apparently we have quite a bit of trimming to do on this day flower, which I won't bore you with that. So let's cut away. Uh, up here at the surface, you can see some of the dayflower stems. They have grown uh, quite a bit, and I'm not disappointed with it, uh, but I would like to find a plant that didn't have this wilting issue. Uh, now, as you may know, all of these dayflower plants are clones from the original stock I brought into the shop here a while back, and I believe I got them started from a pack of wildflower seeds, uh, which is kind of surprising. But yeah, see, we're just plucking the leaves, throwing them right in the jar. It will look a little messy. But, you know, this is a pond aquarium. This is not a uh, gallery aquarium. This isn't something from one of those big channels. This is a little 2-liter soda bottle with what is essentially a pond inside. And in nature, you know, wilted leaves would fall right into the water. Creatures would digest that stuff. It would eventually become substrate. It would fall to the bottom. And it would be captured, kind of like a, uh, like a sequestering device, uh, like a natural pond. So that's what we're doing here, and you can see when I separate the dayflower from the other nearby aquariums that we've grown quite a bit. It's a little stringy, and it has some wilting issues, but once again, it is acting as a filter for the tank, and uh, it's doing a good job at that. Now looking a little lower into the aquarium with an enhanced light source here, you're able to see uh, what's within that dark mat down there in the middle of the tank. Uh, that is Nutella and uh, bladderwort and some other plants. Uh, kind of like a floating bog mat that you would find in a natural pond or a swamp. Uh, but in this situation, it's actually been pushed low into the tank um, through evaporation and my refilling of the water, uh, thus causing like uh, underwater bog mat, essentially. And this is acting as a very powerful filter for this aquarium. Even though I don't have fish in here, the snails and the small creatures still carry a significant bio load. And uh, filtration is required to have the tank last more than a few weeks. So uh, these plants do this job for me. They filter the water, they clean the uh, substrate, they take what nutrients they can, and they grow. 
and as a result, uh, we don't have much algae in this aquarium. Now this tank is two liters, and it's not a huge tank. You could call this a nano aquarium. It's not like uh, a traditional glass tank. It is a plastic two liter bottle. I uh, would like to rotate it a little bit, but I'm a little bit worried about damaging the tank. It is made from some thin plastic, and I have no idea how long this will hold up over time. So uh, I'm pretty careful with it. It stays up here on my shelf. It does receive indirect daylight, and um, I don't heat it or anything special like that. It actually sits on top of an air conditioner. So uh, they receive quite a bit of vibration, and um, you know it stays about 74, 75 degrees in the room, if that's important to you. Maybe you're trying to do this stuff at home and struggling. Um, I do this all at room temperature, at least this project. And my light source might be a little too bright here. Uh, but hopefully you get the idea that this tank is uh, very interesting to me. This is basically a smaller version of my farm aquarium. We have the same plants and the same animals in here, and I'm very happy about that. This is exactly what I wanted to set up. I, I did want it to be a little bit more translucent in the lower areas of the tank, uh, but as these plants grow, as this Nutella gets established, it forms a very strong, uh, almost like a net, like a uh, fishing net. And it's very durable once it's in this form. And it's, it's best not to mess with it too much once it's at this point. Now, if you're just getting started with these pond projects and these types of aquariums, um, I'd like to share a quick story with you. Uh, when I first found my Nutella, I found it out there in a wild pond. I brought it home. I got it growing. I asked for help online with like what to do with it. And people were very rude. They told me there was no way I could keep that in an aquarium. There was no way it would last. It's going to, quote, go sexual and then melt. And uh, people were very mean. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I was just getting started, and I refused to accept their uh, suggestions that I throw it all away. And now look where we're at. You know, I'm able to grow, I don't know, 50 pounds of this Nutella without an issue. And I continuously, every day of my life, laugh in these people's faces. They have no idea what they were talking about. So just remember that if you're just getting started, don't worry. Don't let others discourage you from this hobby that you're stumbling into. Just enjoy it. You know, do what works. Try to figure it out. This tank might look like it has algae on the background, but that's actually an aquarium directly behind this one. Uh, this tank is very clear. And I believe that's from the uh, plants in the macroalgae uh, actively consuming nutrients before bad algae can get to it. So there's another suggestion. Uh... Add something that will compete with the algae that you don't want. It sounds complicated, but uh, they're in here for a reason. They eat up all the nutrients before the bad algae can get to it. So here you see our large pond snail. He is a direct import from Puerto Rico. And uh, he's like a one of our first pilgrims over here colonizing my tanks. That was many months ago, so he's been in here a while now. He's gotten pretty big. Uh, now looking at the tank with the macro lens, we will see the pond snail again in a moment. Uh, but here we have our bladder snails, our paramecia, our detritus worms. This is in a, a very powerful zoom. So these guys are pretty small, but you can see them really well with my macro lens. And uh, that's another suggestion. If you're just getting started, get a macro lens. You can get a cheap one for your camera or for your phone even. And uh, that'll help you see these creatures. And even if you're not making videos, at least you'll be able to see them and to study them a little closer. It's helping me a lot. But you see here are small detritus worms. Um, not the huge numbers that we've had in other aquariums, but they are here, and there's a pretty good population. I've come to the conclusion that my projects, uh, they seem to require the macroalgae and the bladderwort, and even to a limited extent, the duckweed. Because uh, for the ecosystems that I like to build, they look a lot like this. And for this to happen, I seem to need my Nutella. I'm not sure if it offers cover to these creatures or it just gives them a habitat or maybe it just filters the water to such, such an extent that it allows them to uh, overpopulate and breed like mad. I don't really know. The science is a little bit beyond me, uh, but it works and I'm happy about that. Now, the tanks I've tried without the Nutella, they usually end up getting very cloudy and murky and kind of funky and I don't show them so much on the channel. Uh, but here with these tanks, we have a beautiful... Uh, ecosystem. This is a true ecosystem uh, based on light and cucumber slices, which is pretty cool. Uh, you see some weird debris falling and floating here and there in the aquarium. That happens naturally with these tanks. Uh, ostracods will occasionally pull things down. 
uh, buoyancy will pull it back to the surface. It's like a interesting cycle. This is a uh, very active aquarium, and there are there is a lot of motion in here. Just stepping back and watching it. Uh, that large stem there is actually from the dayflower plants, and uh, it's looking pretty healthy to me. There's some roots right there. That little bit of brown stuff, I believe that's actually a type of algae or diatom, but it doesn't seem to be hurting the tank at all, and I'm not too worried about it. I don't do any maintenance on these, so you know if something happens, I'm not going to go in there and like try to cut out the, the bad algae or the diatoms or the blue green algae or whatever. Um, that's all naturally present in a pond. You know, the trick is controlling it naturally. Um, you can go in here and try to pull things out that you don't want, but you're going to be doing that forever. And I'm honestly pretty lazy, so I'm not going to do all that. I uh, like to start off an aquarium, set up an ecosystem, and watch it run. That's more of my thing. I don't want to do a lot of maintenance. So uh, there's another tip. If you're new to this hobby, if you're trying to culture some of these types of creatures, uh, excuse me, playing with the lighting there, if you're trying to culture some of these creatures, uh, don't overthink it. You know, you don't have to pretend that you're a biologist. You're, you're probably not a biologist, you know. So uh, just run with what works. I have no idea what species these detritus worms are. I've never seen, like, their internal organs or any kind of uh, microscope images or anything like that. And I don't need to. You know, there's just no need. They're here. They're healthy. They're uh, not parasitic. I've watched them eat uh, detritus and cucumbers and all sorts of stuff so they're not dangerous in any way and they're not going to hurt anything and uh, I love them I think they're very interesting pets uh, now here we're looking at uh, a little bit higher in the water column still with the macro lens and you can see my ostracods are very numerous uh, they've uh, completely engulfed this piece of dayflower it looks like one of the dayflower stems might have failed and died but that's okay that's part of nature and uh, the ostracods are very grateful we also have a pond snail nearby snacking on it, and another one. Uh, the stringy green stuff is actually a type of duckweed. It's called Florida mud midget, and you've probably seen it in my other videos. Elsewhere in the tank, we have another shot of our large pond snail. Uh, he's a pretty big guy. Um, as far as I can tell, they behave very much like the bladder snails do, and uh, that's pretty cool. You know, I wanted a slightly larger species that would behave in a very similar way as far as breeding and, like, habitats. Uh, so the pond snails were a good option for that. And uh, you can see some physical differences between him and the bladder snails. Uh, but otherwise, they behave in a very similar way. And I'm very happy to have them. Now, looking a little lower in the aquarium, you can see uh, this is beneath the bog mat layer in the middle. This is towards the very bottom near the substrate and the soil and the stones. Uh, but here we have the dayflower rooting beautifully into the area. And we have so many detritus worms and paramecium down here. This is the real uh, action of this aquarium. This is the filter. Um, they are actively breaking down any detritus, any snail waste, any extra food that might float down here. They're tearing it up. They're building it into a substrate for these plants. They're building it into uh, basically a compost or potting soil, however you want to look at it. Uh, but that's the natural action of a pond. As creatures like this will dwell down in the mud, in the bottom. They'll break down all that extra stuff. The plants will take that up, use that to grow, and you have a nice cycle that forms. You know, a plant will die, fall back into the water, stuff will eat it, and, you know, it repeats. I'm very happy to see so many of my detritus worms in here because, uh, yes, I do lose a culture here and there. Uh, you may remember the uh, two and a half gallon aquarium, which I'll link in the description. I've got like 15 videos about it. We had so many worms in there, and uh, I got a little lazy with feeding them. Paramecium replaced them somehow, and then we just had a mass disaster. So I'm happy that that has not happened in this aquarium. And if you are culturing some creatures like these, or maybe you bought one of my kits, remember to feed your pets. <laughs> it's better to overfeed them than to underfeed them, because if you have a million worms die from starvation, it will poison the water, the tank will fail, it'll be bad. So uh, always feed them, feed them a little too much, and remember that as their numbers grow, they will need more food. So Increase the amount of food you give them every so often. You know, give them a thin slice of cucumber the first time. Give them a little bit thicker slice next time. Uh, a year later, give them two slices, give them three slices, however much you think that they need. And, uh, you yeah, know, just use common sense. I don't test pH in this tank. I don't test the temperature or anything like that. You don't have to. Just kind of keep it within room temperature and use good clean water that's near neutral. Uh, not too acidic or too base. So that's the... Uh, 
two liter soda ball aquarium. Here's a good look at the dayflower growing up out of the tank. Um, we have grown quite a bit of dayflower in here and I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, these are all clones of the original plants that I brought into my aquariums uh, two years ago, a year ago, something like that. Uh, but these are all clones, direct copies of those original plants, and I'll most likely cut these off there at the top and replant them back into the tank uh, just to increase the filtration and the amount of uptake of nutrients uh, to keep up with the increased number of pets and snails and worms and things inside. Uh, remember, plants are nature's best filter. You don't need uh, sponge filters or cartridge filters or any of that stuff from the pet store. Um, that doesn't exist in a natural pond, and that natural pond can have a hundred fish and thousands of snails without any issues. So you don't necessarily need that stuff. Uh, but yeah, here it is. This is what you can do with a two-liter soda bottle and some uh, bucket ponds plants uh, and creatures, too, of course. <laughs> this is basically a miniature version of my farm aquarium, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, yeah. I couldn't ask for more with this tank. It could be a little cleaner looking, and there does appear to be a tubaflex culture up there at the top, a tubaflex colony. But that's cool. We're down with them. We love our worms. And I'm happy to share them with you guys. I wanted to get some more shots of the large pond snail inside, but uh, he likes to stay towards the middle, away from the sides, and there is a fair amount of cover in this tank. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all I did. I cut the top off of a 2 liter. I threw some soil in there, some stones. Um, some good clean water, spring water if you have it. Um, I use well water directly from under the ground here in my area, uh, but you might not have that ability, so uh, yeah. Be careful if you use city water. It is full of contaminants. It's full of chemicals and chlorine and all sorts of good stuff uh, that you probably don't want your pets to ingest. It would probably kill them. So I would suggest uh, using spring water or maybe uh, if you have an actual stream or canal, or anything like that nearby, collect some of that good water, make sure it's clean, you know, like read about it a little bit, whatever you have to do. Uh, but do not use city water, it is horrible. We might have a little uh, diatom action or some other algaes in here, but that's okay. Uh, people have to lose the uh, idea that all algae is bad or that all algae is toxic because it's not right. I know we all see the same news stories, oh no, there's an algae bloom, ah, uh, don't worry about all that stuff. Um, in a real situation without human intervention, those algae blooms would be very, very rare. Uh, the fact that they happen so often is because of corrupt local governments doing things that they probably shouldn't do to the bodies of water that are affected by these algae blooms. So uh, don't be like them. You know, don't interfere with the aquarium. Do not dump waste into the tank, things like that, you know. Just be smart. And remember that uh, you can do something like this with a plastic soda bottle. You don't have to spend a ton of money to get into this hobby. Um, I granted my dayflower plants look a little rough, uh, but that's okay. This is a natural pond setup. There's going to be some rough points here and there, and I'm all right with that. So once again, guys, here's a look at the worms with the macro lens. You can see some of the plants and things there. Uh, this is my creature collection. This is my project. These are the things I do. Uh, this is Bucket Ponds. My name is Terry, and I hope you enjoy the video. I hope it helps you set up your own like little pond projects. Um, if so, drop a comment. Let me know. How's it going? Is your project working out? Do you need help? Um, I set up a uh, ecosphere group on Facebook just because there wasn't one. So we might share some ecosphere pictures and things. You're welcome to share some of your stuff or other things you find on the internet. It's all good. Uh, I'll throw a link in the comments. There's like two members right now. I just made it. Uh, but yeah. Well, we're losing some of our good light, so I got to go. Um, thanks again for watching, guys. This is the 2-liter planted soda bottle aquarium also known as the Valentine's Day Aquarium. It is seven months old, and I'm very happy with it. Thanks for watching. Please check my channel for more. Always got tons of this stuff going on. I missed my last upload window on Friday, uh, but I was working on this tank, and it needed some love. It needed uh, to be done properly. So I hope you can bear with me for that, and uh, I'll see you guys again soon.